Λοιπόν, η παρουσίαση θα είναι στα αγγλικά, αλλά εννοείται feel free να κάνετε interrupt με οτιδήποτε ερωτήσεις στα ελληνικά, εννοείται. Ε, και θα ήταν καλό πριν, να, πριν μιλάτε να μου πείτε το όνομά σας για να σας γνωρίσω καλύτερα. Ε, λοιπόν, uh, good afternoon. So, my name is Evangelina, as Ioana said. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm the founder of Bangalore 28. It's a tech and creative agency that is offering services to specific industries that are more creative. Um, so we cater all kinds of solutions from web development to branding. Today, we're going to talk about the image of a company or for an individual and how you can develop it. We're gonna have a look at the basic principles of brand identity the differences between branding and marketing and where do they overlap. And then, as Ioanna said, we're going to apply this theory into practice through a technical workshop. During the technical workshop, I will be with you. So I will guide you and we will rework existing logos that need a brand refresh. So what is branding? Who can tell me how <laughs> How do you understand this terminology? Que es alinica antelete, eh no? Que os bori na mupi, que os xeri tine ton branding. Um, the way I see it is how yes. you build the oh, my name is Andrea. Hi Andrea. <laughs> uh, hi. The way you build the perception about you, about your brand uh, to others. Okay. That's very good. Someone else? Does anyone have an answer? Do you how do you how do you understand this terminology? Anyone else? No? Yes? Telia. The truth is, by definition, by the American Marketing Association, a brand is a name term, design, symbol, otherwise known as the logo, or any other feature that identifies one seller's good or service as distinct from those of the competition. Yes? So in a nutshell is what you, Andrea and Christos, just said. So in essence, a bra branding is a feeling. Yes, it's an emotional response. It is memorable. It stays in, in, in the client's mind. It builds trust and it is an identity to align customer interests and convey values. But okay, this is clear, but how does it differentiate itself from marketing? Do we have any ideas? Do we know the differences or how do we understand what is marketing? Can someone know? I'm Kostas. I would say Hi, Kostas. how you sell your uh, brand. It's marketing. Yes. And, bra and, and that's, you think, the difference between the two. It's how you sell with yes, marketing. Yes, this is how I understand it. Okay. That's very good. And we will have a look at the... Yes? Um, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Um, you evaluate the market. Yes. I see uh, you work with the prices. Mm -hmm. And you see what people are interested in. Yes. Can you do the research? Too? Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, maybe marketing is a process uh, that you will reach the customer, and then what the customer sees is the branding. Exactly. Okay. Marketing is a set of tactile activities. It's exactly what you said that basically. <laughs> sell a product is to achieve hard sales it's instant branding is the glue that holds together all those activities um that holds the, yeah together all those activities so let's take for example a giant corporation yes you have different departments you have sales you have operations you have you have um it you have marketing the way the people who work there interact, the way they talk, the way they present something, that is branding. You often hear about the work culture. That is branding. Another very important thing is marketing strategies are ever-changing. Branding is an investment for the long haul. 
what do we mean, we mean by that? Marketing strategies are based on trends. So one day we're investing um, in activities on Instagram. Now we're investing in TikTok. Hello. Um, <laughs> um, we're using influencers. Now we're going to micro influencing. Branding is about investing for the long haul. It's about creating an image that's going to stay for a lifetime. Another difference is that marketing cultivates customers, but with branding, you're building customer loyalty. It's again, it's about building trust and reliability. And as you've mentioned, marketing sales, it's instant, like I said before, but with branding, you're pre-selling your product in the mind of the consumer. So it's about pre-selling it, preparing the idea of what you're about to sell. So the question is, is branding um, more powerful? We have this disbelief that commodity items like bread, milk and water do not are not strong enough they're not they're not branded as opposed to branded buys like for example netflix and an apple like for me i'm gonna buy a desktop because it's apple and i know it's safe and that is a brand buy because i'm i've i've come to believe that there are no viruses and it's fast etc but what about commodity buys let's take the simplest and purest item in the world and that is water what Evian did was, which is, they started marketing themselves that this is clean, pure water from the French Alps, and it's super expensive, and it's, and it's pure, and they've managed to sell 80% more than Coca-Cola. This means that branding has the power to influence purchasing behavior. So the question is when you're starting something, whether that is branding your own self or your company, how do you turn your water, which is so simple, into a brand that is as powerful as Evian? There are three laws. <laughs> as a matter of fact, there are 22, but due to time constraints, we're gonna have a look at the three most important ones. The first one is the law of the word. When you look at the logo of Netflix, what is the word that comes to mind? Can anyone tell me? I want to see if how if this is also known. I think some of you might know, but maybe you are shy. It's a very simple answer. Anyone? No? Yes, they've managed to, yes, <laughs> they've managed to promote this whole idea of Netflix and chill. It became so known to the public that it became solidified in the urban dictionary known as what are you doing tonight? I'm going to Netflix and chill. That was their mission statement. You're not going to say Apple TV and chill or Hulu and chill. What is that? No, it's Netflix and chill. So the law of the word, basically what it says is that you should always strive for one word in the mind of the consumer. Let's take another use case, and that is Mercedes-Benz. They've tried for many years to associate their brand with the word prestige. You will see all their ads talking about prestige and elegance and, and how they differentiate themselves from Hondas, which are known as well-engineered, and Audis, which are known as German you need to find a word code. So when you're building your own brand, you should find the word that you can associate it with what you're building and then capitalize on that word so that it gets seared into your customer's uh, mind. Now, the second one is the law of contraction. Good things happen when you contract, not expand. Let's take, for example, Starbucks. In the US, before Starbucks, there were a lot of coffee shops that they were serving breakfast, lunch, dinner, all items, right? 
Howard Schultz, who was the CEO of Starbucks, said, okay, this is enough. I'm going to launch a coffee shop that is going to specialize in 30 different types of coffee. And that's it. Now Starbucks is worth more than a billion dollars. It's everywhere, it's, it's all around the globe. And the way that he did that, hi, <laughs> was that he narrowed down its focus. He specialized in something. Now, an advice that I received, and I think it's very important that I share it with you, is that when you are building something, always follow what successful companies did when they started. Because you should always remember that they were once the new kid on the blog. They were something small, right? So there's always capacity to build and reach their level. Now, what they did was, it was the same thing. They all specialized in something. Pizza Hut specialized in pizzas when they started. And then, as they progressed, they expanded their menu by adding breadsticks and pizza burgers. But keeping the main ingredient as the star of their company, which was the dough. Now, having said this, when you're doing something, specialize, start small, and then expand. The third law, and it's very important, is the law of fellowship. Now, the CEO of McDonald's once said, if we served beer and wine, we will eventually have 100% of the food and service market. They tried and they failed. And the reason being is that no brand can ever own an entire market unless this is a government sanctioned monopoly. Do we all understand? We can understand that, yes? So that means that we should never allow greed to, t to take over our common sense. A brand should welcome other brands. One very important um, case study is Coca-Cola and Pepsi. They're the same brand, yes. And actually Pepsi was the best thing that could ever happen to Coca-Cola. And the reason being is that choice stimulates demand. Let me ask you something. How many times when, when you see a new brand coming up or a new startup and they're on their own and they're doing something on their own, they don't have competition, don't you feel a little bit suspicious? What is this? Is it safe for me to consume? Is it safe for me to try this service? What is the value that they're going to give me? But when you have choice, consumption increases. And it also enables for credibility. Also, consumers are always a little bit afraid when they see a brand dominating the market. Why? Because they instantly think that this brand is charging them far more than what the actual product is, i.e. they're taking advantage of being the dominant in the market. So in other words, market share is not based on merit. It is based on the power of the brand in the mind. So you might wonder, okay, great, but how did Coca-Cola and Pepsi survive with each other? belonging in the same market. They had a differentiation strategy. Coca-Cola appealed to older crowds, Pepsi to younger. Remember those ads with Britney Spears and Enrique Iglesias and, and they had like this cool hipster vibe going on. They remained powerful, they remained focused, and at the same time, they expanded the market. This is actually amazing. I don't know if you've seen this in the past. Um, Burger King was urging their customers to go and buy from McDonald's. If you can have a look at the last paragraph, which it says, you know, a Whopper is always the best option, but a Big Mac is not, it's not a bad thing, which is why you will always see McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, Pizza Hut located next to each other because they know that a client, who, a customer who consumes McDonald's, they will also consume Burger King. They will also consume KFC. It's the same situation with 
Hard Rock Cafe and Planet Hollywood. That's what they did. They were always close to each other because they knew that they have the same customer. So to summarize, the first law is the law of the word. You should always aim for one word in the mind of the consumer. The second is the law of contraction. Contract first, then expand. Number three is the law of fellowship. You need competition. Again, choice stimulates demand. The right question to ask is how large a market your brand can create through those three principles. Not what percentage of an existing market can your brand achieve. So going back to the initial question, what is branding? It is a singular idea or a concept that you own inside the mind of a prospect. It is about what you choose to say, and you should always choose wisely because we're going to see that brands are very volatile. It's very simple, but it can be also very difficult. So now we're going to go to the nitty gritty part of branding. How do you develop this? How do you develop your idea? Who can tell me what comes to mind? You want you you want to do, you have an idea and you want to start executing it. Who can tell me what is the first thing that you you want to do? Hi, uh, my name is Daniela. Hi, Daniela. Um, you have to do market research. I think the first thing to see um, if there is need for this in the market. Okay. There's one thing before that. Someone else. Yes. Hello, I'm <laughs> Hi. George. Hi, George. <laughs> first, I think the first thing that you could do is actually look out for problems around you, something that affects you mm -hmm. specifically. And after okay. that, you can even do market research to see if others are being affected by the same thing as you. And that's when you will try to find a solution to that. Yes, exactly. You have to develop your itch. What is your story? One thing that I always share with my clients is that when you pour your story into your brand, it's also a way to differentiate from the rest. You have this itch in you, this something that you need to resolve and add value into someone's life. Because like, like we said in the beginning, branding is about feeling, it's about creating and disseminating an emotion between you and your customers. So the key something like the mission statement or it's a part the mission statement is a part of this we will have a look at the breakdown right after but in the beginning you have to come up with you have to develop the story what is the story what what is that itch that you have in you mm -hmm. that you think is going to bring value into someone's life and like i said the more you pour yourself into your work the more you differentiate because there's only one of you, one of us. So the key concepts is commit to your core values, to the customer values. Talk about innovation, differentiation and positioning. So like what you said, market research is gonna help you position yourself into the market. You need a progressive story, not individual campaigns. Marketing are individual campaigns. Branding is progressive. It's a story. And last but not least, that is how you convert your customers to evangelists, to loyalists. So conveying the brand, who are your customers? Who can you best serve? What is your capacity? Then we have to segment by interests, values, and needs. What do they need? in order to resolve something in their daily lives. You need to convey and maintain your brand through targeted marketing and advertising. Someone mentioned this before that you should, I think it was you who said about targeting yes. your audience. And then, as I've mentioned, it's so important to build trust, credibility, reliability, 
Customers should believe that there is no alternative to what you're offering. Okay, so what is the action plan? This is the theory, but then how do we put the theory into practice? The first thing is conducting a SWOT analysis. Are you all aware what a SWOT analysis is? Yes? No? A SWOT analysis is you have to write down what are, your, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, what are your opportunities, and then what are your potential threats. As I've mentioned in the past, brands are very volatile. Let's take an example with Pepsi. Have you all seen the ad when Kendall Jenner was handing um, a Pepsi can to a police officer? It was a very controversial ad. Uh, there's this very known model known as Kendall Jenner who handed a Pepsi can to a police officer and it was a protest. And Pepsi was accused of, um, of sensationalizing Black Lives Matter. And everyone on Twitter was saying, we should all ban Pepsi. Pepsi is, is a, they're outrageous for doing this. Only drink Coca-Cola. Pepsi is not, we should ban it. So what they did was they came out and they, they retracted the ad, obviously. They apologized. But the thing is, it boosted their sales. Because any press is good press. And although they apologized, although they had a contingency plan, they were able to gain more traction. The second step is about planning. So the situation analysis. So where are we? Why are we here? Where could we be? How do we get there? And then how did it go? You should always measure in order to optimize. Any questions? No. The third step is forming a brand equity. Ioana, this is what you said. So it's the definition. So it's one sentence articulating your brand. Then it's the mission statement, the reason for being. So why are you doing this? You're the reason for being. The vision. So what is the bigger picture? Four or five beliefs, core values that you should never compromise and always measure against. Your positioning, so one sentence for on how, what, and for whom. And last but not least, and this is the most important, your value proposition. What is the value that you're going to offer to your customers? What is the problem that you are resolving a very good pitch whether you are a startup or a company it's not describing your services it's telling them this is what i do and this is how i'm going to resolve your problem branding is also about the visual identity as we said in the beginning it's about the symbol the design the, the logo, if you like. So the visual identity is comprised from by naming. So what are you going to call your brand? Logo design, is it going to be a brand mark or typographic? We're going to see the examples later on. Typography, are you going for a serif family or a sans serif family? And what do they each evoke? The color palettes, each color has a psycho it taps into psychology. It evokes something. So you have to be very mindful in what colors you're going to use. And last but not least, the tone of voice. How are you going to communicate this to your clients? Are you going to be casual? Are you going to be more formal, authoritative? What is the tone? And you keep consistency. These are some examples of logos. So we're gonna start with the typographic logos up to the corner. Can you see that there, is no, there isn't a brand mark? It's just typography and that is their logo. Then we have the brand mark logos, which, is just, which you know them from that brand mark. So you have Nike, which is the, the 
tick sign. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> um, then you have Starbucks, you have Domino's Pizza, you have Pepsi. And then right down here, you have a combination of logos, which combines both typography and the brand mark. Nothing is right or wrong. You can do everything and anything as long as it stays with your customers and as long as they recognize you because of that. The next thing that we're going to have a look at is typography. Do we know a little bit about typography? Okay. So the first part is called serif. And then the second example is called sans serif. The first part I'm going to come here to show you. So these letters, as you can see, they have little feet. They're called serif because they have curves at the edges of each letter. Sans serif are more minimal and straight and, and, and more authoritative. They don't have the little curves at the edges. Now, what do each evoke? Serifs, they were associated with Renaissance and Italian architecture, and, and, and they all had this evoking slick luxury, and they were reincarnated by magazines like Vogue and, and other more on the high-end side of things. Sans serif, again, they have the inspiration from modern machi machinery, <coughs> mass production, modernism, and actually the first set of sans serif was discovered on the Rosetta Stone, which is amazing. It, it's two contrasting um, typograph uh, typography that each evoke something different. During the 90s, when there was recession and, and, and everyone had to, you know, the economy was uh, was horrible and they had to cut down losses uh, cut down costs and everything you could see that a lot of brands they were rebranding using the sans serif typography which was very minimal and clean and pure and it was in line with this economic recession that was going on especially in the US so we have a saying that nothing happens until you sell something. Now, I believe that this is replaced with nothing happens until you brand something. Branding is very important. It, it, it can influence everything. It can influence the way someone perceives you. And I truly think that it's much more important than marketing. So if you were to invest, you should invest first in your branding, position yourself, and then start utilizing marketing techniques to get yourself out there. Some resources that I would recommend, these are three books if you want to write them down that can help you understand and, and, and grasp um, better the concept of branding. I'm gonna leave this a little bit if you want to, yeah, take a picture or write it down. And before we proceed, do we have any questions before I proceed to the next part? Anything that you want to ask? Okay, great. I have a question. Yes. How am I gonna brand something without even having any sales? I mean, if I'm starting up, there's gonna be a cost. How am I gonna be able to tell if it's going to be uh, profitable? I mean, how do you get to that part? That, that part gets through optimization, but you're not bearing yourself with any costs. You're just choosing your colors, you're making just one logo, and you're starting to brand yourself first before you proceed to any other means like website, advertising, social media. That is how you, it needs consistency and it needs time. That is why branding is for the long haul. It creates something that is of value and it can last a lifetime. Marketing is instant. It comes and it goes. It's based on fads and, and trends. One day we are, 
we we are talking about the metaverse and, and AI and, and, and because it's a trend, but it's a very shaky ground. How do you know it's gonna last? It's market that is marketing. It's not branding. Any other questions? I think you had a question. No, I was just gonna say before you I was gonna ask actually. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like to get funding, yeah, you have to have first kind of a business plan. Yes. Kind of like that and present it to. Yes. Someone. But. Some funding because that's you start with an idea, but when you're young, where do you go? That's kind kind of how I. I started with an idea and I failed several times. I was pitching and I was failing, and and this was in a span of a month. And failing and receiving feedback from investors or from potential partners is crucial because you should listen <coughs> what they're saying and apply to your work. But at the same time, you should never compromise your core values. If you have certain values and you're certain that what you're doing is actually going to bring something positive into someone's life, then you should never compromise on that. Rework your idea, yes. Values, you stick through that. I think you have a question? No? Yes? Uh, so I think eco uh, some economists say that, uh, give a different kind of definition of branding, mm -hmm. that branding is basically, it's like uh, expectations that are built on a, a long uh, uh, history of interactions Brand. and uh, experiences. Yes. So how does this align with, uh, you know, when you try to build a, a brand uh, this way? I mean, when you start where there are no, you know, prior experiences or interactions with uh, customers, with uh, uh, partners, etc. That is why I've, I've said that developing a story and your story and pouring that into your brand and, and sticking through it and believing that this, what I'm doing is going to succeed can often take you very far. Because the thing is, να το πω στα ελληνικά, πολλές φορές όταν βάζουμε τον εαυτό μας μέσα στη δουλειά μας και βγαίνει προς τα έξω το είναι και δηλαδή τι, τι μας κάνει εμάς σαν άνθρωπο, γιατί το κάνουμε αυτό, τι είναι αυτό που θέλουμε να, να προσφέρουμε και να λύσουμε για κάποιον. Πολλές φορές αυτό είναι το κλειδί και να σας πάρει πάρα πολύ μπροστά γιατί ένα είναι από... Δεν υπάρχουν άλλοι, δεν υπάρχει δεύτερος. Είστε εσείς. Ναι, σίγουρα ένα business plan υπάρχει πάντα capacity να βελτιώνετε και να ακούτε πάντα τι θα σας πει ο άλλος. Αλλά αυτό που λέω πάντα, τα values και το story να παραμένει εκεί γιατί είναι αυτό που σας κάνει εσά. Είναι, είναι, είναι το είναι σα. Νομίζω... Ναι, βεβαίως. Είναι ότι πρέπει να είμαστε ξεκάθαροι ποιο είναι, ποιος είναι ο στόχο του προϊόντος. Δηλαδή, τι, τι, αυτό που είπες προηγουμένως, το τι πρόβλημα θέλουμε να λύσουμε. Να δημιουργήσουμε ένα story γύρω από το προϊόν μας. Το οποίο να λέει σε ποιο να απευθυνόμαστε, τι πρόβλημα πρέπει να λύσουμε, τι Ακριβώς. θέλουμε να κάνουμε και τι προσδοκούμε να κάνουμε στο μέλλον. Ακριβώς. Και μην ξεχνάτε ότι... Όσον εσείς εξελίσσεστε σαν ανθρώποι, τόσο θα εξελίσσετε και η ιδέα σας, που δεν είναι κακό. Αυτό θέλουμε έτσι κι αλλιώς. Να εξελισσόμαστε, να μην μένουμε στάσιμοι και να αγνοούμε τι γίνεται γύρω μας. Αλλά χωρίς, όπως το έχω πει, να κάνουμε compromise τα δικά μας values. Το technical workshop που έχουμε ετοιμάσει μαζί με την Ιωάννα είναι να κάνουμε redesign κάποια logos τα οποία υπάρχουν ήδη. Έβαλα και το δικό μου τη εταιρεία μου γιατί θα ήθελα να δω πώς το βλέπετε και πώς θα θέλατε να το δείτε τέλο πάντων. Ε, αλλά πριν πάμε, έτσι να δούμε λίγο εδώ, θα ρωτήσω κάποιες ερωτήσεις. Ποιο μπορεί να μου πει το logo της ΣΥΤΑ, γραμματοσυρά από αυτά που είπαμε και αν είναι typographic, combination ή brand mark. Είναι σαν σέριφ το λόγο, τι γραμματοσυρά και είναι combination. Έχει τα δύο. Τέλεια. Της εταιρείας μου. Ε, 
Μπράβο. Σκέτ. Μπράβο. Τέλεια. Ε, πάμε... Πάμε στο, center, πάμε στο Center of Entrepreneurship. Ποιος μπορεί να μου πει. Combination. Combination και η γραμματοσυρά. Sounds great. Μπράβο. Τέλεια. Ε, εγώ, Ιωάννα μου, μπορούμε να προχωρήσουμε, αν θέλουμε, στο επόμενο part. Αν, αν, φυσικά, αν υπάρχουν ερωτήσεις, feel free. Νομίζω ότι είναι κατανοητό. Σε αυτό το μέρος προτείνουμε βασικά να βοηθείτε σε 